the dramatic climax of a year in which Indonesia repudiated the communists and the one-man rule of Sukarno began the night of October 1st, 1966, a year to the day the communists tried to seize the country. Assembled was a special military tribunal. On trial was Dr. Sabandrio, next to Sukarno, the most powerful man in Indonesia. He was deputy prime minister, foreign minister, head of the state secret police, boss of the anti-American state news agency. He was also President Sukarno's closest friend and confidant. His trial was particularly significant because it helped establish that Sukarno himself clearly had a role in the communist coup. It was Sukarno who protected Sabandrio in the palace after the coup attempt. When students ransacked Sabandrio's foreign office and discovered correspondence between him and Red China's foreign minister Chen Yi planning the coup, they stormed the palace, threatening to behead Sabandrio. Only then was he imprisoned. The charges against him include treason and conspiracy. The evidence showed Sabandrio helped the three million strong Communist Party, its initials PKI, to plot and carry out the coup, including the mass murder of Indonesia's military high command. It was charged that he welded the Indonesia Peking Axis, stole government funds, invented stories to discredit the United States, and conspired with Red China to smuggle guns to Indonesia's communists. Haji Dr. Sabandrio. Haji Dr. Sabandrio pleaded innocent to all the charges. He was found guilty and sentenced to death. Hundreds more involved in the PKI coup are in prisons. Painstaking interrogations have pieced together the incredible plot. Being questioned is the commander of one of the three divisions that spearheaded the coup, Captain Suradi. Supported by the PKI, their mission was to disable the army by murdering its top commanders, seize all communications, and immobilize the government long enough for the PKI politicians to take over. The cells on death row are filled with the plotters, only because General Suharto and Nasutian escaped their murderers and rallied loyal army units was the coup crushed. Colonel Latif here tried to kill General Nasutian, was wounded in the process, and now awaits trial. During the coup, Latif directed tactical operations. General Parman, chief of the army intelligence, was killed by this man. He shot General Yanni, chief of the army. Here the murderer of the deputy chief of staff. Lance Corporal Hargiono missed General Nasutian, but shot his sister and infant daughter five times. Terror and bestiality was a calculated part of the PKI plan. They even had special mutilation squads made up of girls. The night of the coup, Enda here tortured Nastutian's aide to death with a razor. They call it death of a thousand cuts. Sex orgies went on before the torture ceremonies got underway. The girls claimed they were promised $10 for the evening's work but were never paid. The girls were instructed by a communist woman's organization called Garwani. For six months before the coup, they were meticulously trained in the fine art of torture. They were even given four innocent human victims to practice on. The way it was planned, according to their confessions, was the night of the coup, the captured army generals would be brought to a farm near Jakarta called Lubam Boya, or the Alligator Hole. Here they were to be ritualistically tortured to death. As it worked out, three of the generals were dead on arrival. The remaining victims, to the delight of the huge communist throng, were slowly killed. Eventually, the mutilated bodies were dumped down a well. The spectacular atrocities were calculated to so terrorize Indonesia that there would be no resistance to the coup. 
it worked just the other way. When the hideousness of their crimes were made public, it triggered a national revulsion. This set off the equally brutal slaughter and arrest of half a million suspected communists from one end of Indonesia to the other. And the purge continues to this day. What you see here is typical. Supported by the army, high school and college student organizations seal off and search a Jakarta suburb for communists. Homes are entered and searched. Men, women and children are interrogated. Identification papers are examined. If the students or the soldiers don't like what they find or meet any resistance, summarily and without warrant or formal charge, they take the suspect into custody. On this day, more than a hundred suspects like this man were hustled in. A kind of kangaroo court, supervised by military officers, was held in a nearby building. Here they somehow determined which suspects would be arrested. Sixty were taken off to jail this day, and very uncertain fates. The bitterest current purge is against the Chinese. Between 15 and 40,000 have been killed. The slogans say, Sukarno is the dog of Peking. Sukarno, whore of Peking. The communists are the Chinese. Kill the Chinese. In some places, Chinese stores must be labeled with the sign RRT, meaning People's Republic of China. Usir means kick out, kick out the Chinese. The hatred for the Chinese, even the loyal Chinese, is due in a large part to the fact they dominate 80% of the economy and many refuse to integrate or assimilate with the Indonesians. About 600,000 remained citizens of Red China and they did support the PKI. Worst of the Chinese pogroms are here in Sumatra. Last August, a Muslim group gave the 7,000 Chinese in their district five days to get out. To prevent their slaughter, the army packed them into makeshift camps. They reacted strongly when we tried to film their plight. For two months, 1,600 men and women, children have crowded in here waiting to return to Red China. As you can hear, they're not very friendly. They're very short of food. Their cry, if you can, as you can hear, is Gang Yang America, Gang Yang Mia Cologne, which means crush America, crush the neocolonialists. Watch out, Julie, here come the stones. Throwing stones at us here. There are five other camps like this. A total of about 5,000 Chinese. They're waiting to be deported. Good, watch out. What was that now? The uh, sentries are firing their rifles over the heads of these people to keep them suppressed. These people are beginning to get out of hand. They're, they're firing submachine guns now into the air. Uh-oh, one soldier was just hit on the chin by a rock. Okay, Julie. Julie. 